Hi everyone, this is Rebecca from Chemnitz. And as luck would have it, on the day the Dye Pot Weekly snow dyeing episode came out, we got some fresh snow. So I thought it would be fun today to do some more snow dyeing with Kool-Aid and some sock blanks. <laughs> what do you think? Since I am planning on using some Kool-Aid flavors for today's video, and Kool-Aid contains citric acid, we do not need to add any vinegar to our dye bath. So right now I am adding a 100 gram worsted weight knit blank to just some plain tap water. And I'm also going to do a commercial stroll blank that is 100 grams of stroll fingering yarn, which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And in this strand, the yarn is double knit. So there's two strands of yarn knit together. So that way we could end up with two identical 50 gram skeins of yarn. This worsted weight blank that I made myself just has one strand of yarn. So now I am going to let these soak for, you know, at least 30 minutes. I want the fibers to be saturated before I put the snow on top so that way the, the fibers can easily absorb any dye that drips through. If you don't have access to fresh snow but you want to play around with this technique, you can try using ice cubes or even make some crushed ice in a blender. Now I haven't tried these variations personally, but this is what I would recommend if you know, you're waiting, waiting, waiting for snow and none is coming. Right here I have 16 Kool-Aid packets and this is what I'm going to start out using to dye our 200 grams of yarn that is in sock blanks. My setup here involves two dish basins and three um, cookie cooling racks over them so that way I can attempt to catch some of the melt through dye. This is not necessary, you could just let anything that melts go straight down the drain, but I sometimes like to use the additional remaining food coloring for other experimentation. I have laid out both sock blanks here and I have laid them out, I laid the commercial double-stranded sock plank out in sort of a crinkled manner, intentionally. I could have tried to make it straighter and blocked it a bit so it could fill more of the surface area. But since I wanted to fit the two blanks, I decided to do it this way. The single-stranded worsted weight blank kind of goes up, down, and then back up. And so I am Really, really curious to see what kinds of patterns we will see from our snow dyeing. I just went out and grabbed a basin full of snow. Now I'm using a spoon to start spreading it over the yarn. I might need to go back and get some more, but I'm trying to save my hands because this can get quite cold. So you can see we've got some really nice powder here. This is sort of going on top really, really easily. <laughs> and up a seed pod. <laughs> Scraping this on. So I think I will go get a second bucket of snow. I have the middle pretty well covered, but we still want some more around the edges. And we can also, using the spoon, push it on and sort of save our fingers a bit. So I'm going to go grab some more. Okay, I am back with some more snow. And make sure that you're using care to protect yourself and whatnot. I wouldn't want anyone to get frostbite or anything. Uh, using the spoon, I might pull it back again in the end, but right now I'm going to use my hands and I'm sort of dumping the snow to try to get as much coverage on our fabric as possible. And this is really cold. <laughs> so, just so you know, because you can't, we can end up getting some white 
areas around our blanks, which we don't always want, but in a blank situation, it can end up giving some really, really cool effects. So, and in places I can't easily reach, I can use my spoon to kind of help <laughs> as I climb up and try to get snow over the far side of all of our blanks. All right, it's probably as good as we are going to get. So that was actually really cold. Um, I am going to give my hands a little bit to warm up before we start adding the dye to the snow. Um, and I'm also going to put on gloves so that way I don't turn my hands beautiful Kool-Aid colors. All right, I have thawed out a bit and now I'm going to start on one end adding our food coloring to the snow, or adding our Kool-Aid to the snow. So in the red section, I am planning to use two packets of cherry Kool-Aid. I have a plastic band, so I have a plastic bag over here, so that way I can uh, throw away the packets to try to avoid making too much of a mess. Sort of like an intermediate section. Alright, now we've got orange. Sort of shake the packets before cutting the tops off. have a tiny bit of orange down there and that is okay. Whoops, that was a lot of orange I poured right there. This is why I'm glad I have two packets. <laughs> I mean you can certainly mix things up a bit more however you choose. But I know that we will not have totally even coverage, even though we're making this cool rainbow of the colors in our various sections. So I think it will be really, really cool to see how it turns out. Now for the yellow, I actually have three packets because I know that the yellow is a bit paler, especially in comparison to the red. And that's why I also have three packets of green, of the lemon lime, and so I guess there's flavors so far, cherry, orange, this is lemonade, we have lemon and lime, ice blue raspberry lemonade, and grape. Now when it comes to doing this technique, what about using other kinds of powders, like say dyes that have not yet been mixed. Well, we're going to have some green in our blue section, aren't we? Um, you certainly, certainly could try this with acid dyes. It's just since with those powders, and really those powders are a lot finer than these ones that I'm using. The, the particles in the Kool-Aid um, are a little harder to inhale than the acid dye powders. And so, although, you know, you should still always take precautions, it's just something to keep in mind and a reason why maybe you would not want to try this with acid dyes. Or you could if you're in like a well-ventilated room or something. I don't think it would necessarily be too much of a problem. But, I mean, wearing a mask, it's just that, you know, it's going to take a while for this to be non-particle form, so we've got our blue. And in the purple section, I'm actually going to use two packets of grape and one packet of the ice blue raspberry lemonade. And I've chosen to do that to kind of make the purple be a little more of a bluish purple than a grayish purple. So, 
That is my plan. We all know how much I love purple. So here there's many different variables that will depend on the way that the kinds of colors that we get. It'll be, you know, how much snow there is on top and how the, how the different um, snow patches melt. Also like how we laid out the blanks underneath. You know, so the, the worsted blank goes back and forth, so we'll have smaller sections of color, whereas on the commercial double strand blank, we should have some bigger sections of color. So it should all be cool. And you could even have some white sections. But because of the way the blanks are knit up, it'll be almost more speckled than a full stripe. So I think that it'll look really cool. Try to get this semi evenly over. See how gray the uh, grape looks? Thought it would be fun to add a little bit of a punch. It is a little after 2 p.m. when I add, had this all set up. And I know it'll take hours for the snow to melt. And instead of doing a number of check-ins like I've done on the past that's we're waiting for it to melt, I think I might do fewer check-ins and instead try to film a time lapse of our snow melting. So, I mean, I don't know if my camera can handle doing hours of footage, so there might be some gaps in the middle. But with any luck right now, you will hear a cool song and watch our snow quickly melt to leave some cool patterns on the sock blanks beneath it. after we first added the food coloring. And there's only the tiniest bit of snow left. The yarn is still pretty cold, so I am going to let it slowly come up to room temperature, and then we will prepare it for microwaving. The snow has melted, and check it out. We have a lot more consistent gradient of color on our worsted weight blank. Oh wow, look how far the purple went down over there. Oh, that's, whoa. That's really cool. Those colors really, really mixed down there. I'm really amazed, actually. I'm curious about the stroll blank. Wow. Look at those mottled colors that we have on the other side. And I think it's really cool that the colors sort of struck, but then where the folds and stuff were are so white. I think it's awesome. These will be really, really fun to unravel, but first we need to set the heat. So I have here some plastic wrap, and I'm going to sort of rip off two sheets. One, well maybe I'll need a couple more. The plan is to try to cover for example, our stroll. Here we want to try to keep the colors as separated as possible. Because now that we have this really cool pattern on here, we'd hate I'd hate for it to get, I guess, ruined or altered. So I'm gonna sort of roll this on the plastic wrap in sort of a reverse jelly roll kind of pattern. There we go. Okay. All right, and I'm gonna place that in, ooh, look at the run through. I'm gonna go ahead and place that in a microwave safe bowl and heat it in the microwave on high for at least four minutes. 
All right, I went ahead and laid plastic wrap over our single-stranded worsted blank. And I'm gonna wrap this up. And wow, look at all the purple we got on that side. It's almost as if the purple color just ran all the way down the blank. Anyway, I'm gonna set this in another microwave safe bowl and also heat this for four minutes or until the fiber is piping hot. So I started collecting the runoff. We had a little bit of blue and a whole lot of red. So I'm just about to mix some of this extra red orange with our blue since Ultimately, I was probably going to mix them up anyway. But we can save this runoff for another dyeing experiment. I microwaved these blanks for a total of six minutes each. I did four minutes on high, then did the other one on four minutes on high, and then I did two and two just for good measure. And I'm now gonna let these cool completely before we wash our blanks. All right, let's wash our commercial stroll blank. But look at the splotch of color we've got. I have never dyed a piece of fabric with snow dyeing or ice dyeing. So I am really, really excited that we got some fun patterns here on the blank. I mean, it very, very much looks like something that has been tie-dyed or something like that. So anyway, from just placing this quickly in the water, I do not see any color leaking out. But, oh, all right. I am going to focus on washing this. I'm going to add a little bit of dish soap. This is just cool, otherwise cool tap water right now. Um, this will need a number of rinses, not because of the, not because of any dye coming out, but just because there was a lot of, in addition to citric acid, there's a lot of flavoring that's in the Kool-Aid, and it helps reduce the uh, Kool-Aid smell if you do a fair amount of rinsing. So anyway, I'm going to rinse this and then hang it up to dry. Here is our homemade worsted weight blank. And right off the bat, you can see that the colors are more muted than they were on the commercial stroll blank. But the patterns that the colors went through are so cool. Like on this one side, we had the green, but then we have so much purple that went down the other side. I'm just so curious about how, how that happened. Nevertheless, we've got a really, really gorgeous blank that will unravel really nicely. Once again, I'm adding some clear dish soap to help with the rinsing, and I will rinse this multiple times before I put the blank back through the salad spinner to remove excess water and then hang it up to dry. We just dyed two different blanks with a snow dyeing technique, and they could not be more different. We dyed a commercial knit pick sock blank that is a double knit blank. It has two strands of stroll figurine weight yarn, a superwash merino nylon blend, knit together in this blank so you can get two identical 50 gram skeins of yarn in the end. The homemade blank is a single strand of Wool of the Andes worsted weight yarn it's 100% wool and it's not superwash. Look at the intensity from the straw blank versus the wool of the Andes blank. From the way that they were initially laid out, you can see a rainbow gradient in both of them, but there's a lot more coverage of color on this wool yarn. And we've got a very tie-dyed look on the straw fingering yarn. Depending on where there were folds and wrinkles, the dye just didn't settle there. I dye these two yarn bases side by side a lot, and frequently we see, you know, differences and we know that the dyes strike faster to the stroll yarn than the Will of the Andes yarn. But what is super apparent here is just the depth of color. And I think that because the dyes strike the stroll so fast, it's not spreading out throughout the blank. 
Whereas if I were to flip these over, so we look at the wrong side or the bottom side of our wool of Andy's blank, we're not seeing as much of our rainbow gradient anymore. It's like the, the purple dye kind of wicked along the bottom and dyed it. Whereas the reverse of the sock blank is sort of a less saturated version of what we saw on the other side. So I think again, when the dyes and the drips of color from melting snow are hitting the yarn, on the 100% wool yarn, they're traveling further because it's just not striking to the fiber as fast as it is on the stroll, where it's striking so quickly that, you know, we have these much more discreet patches of color than what we see on the wool of the Andes yarn. Now, I'm really curious for when we unravel this, what the inside of these sections look that are half purple and half blue. Um, I'm really, really excited. I think that this is going to bring this yarn a really, really fun quality because it's almost going to be a rainbow with these purple patches throughout. And I think that that'll be really, really cool. I expect to see, I mean, clearly there's going to be a lot of white when we unravel the sock blank, but you can tell from the reverse side that we will also see some really cool variation of color um, within these colored sections because the color didn't penetrate all the way through to the other side. And this is only two strands of yarn. So when we've done the snow dyeing with stroll, we saw that there was a lot of white on the base on the side that was not touching the snow. And it's the same thing here, that even with just a few strands of yarn, the dye is striking so quickly that we're getting this really, really beautiful, beautiful tie-dye effect. Um, and I cannot wait to unravel these. In fact, I was debating whether or not I would unravel these before the dyeing episode came out or after. And I think that I'm going to do a live stream to unravel these blanks um, as a sneak peek and to chat more about the sock blank special. And so that way, at the end of this video, I can show you what the final skeins of yarn look like. If you would like to watch me unravel these blanks, check out the February 7th, 2018 live stream, where I unwound the blanks and wound them both onto Nitty Knotties. All of the yarn turned out to be absolutely beautiful, but there are a lot of differences in between the Stroll Sock yarn we dyed and the Worsted Wool of the Andes yarn that we dyed. We now have two identical 50 gram skeins of yarn that go from, you know, a red to orange, green, and then there is like a, a big blue section before the purple. There isn't much of a yellow section because the yellow on our blank tended to be overwhelmed by the green and the orange, but in places you can see some flecks of yellow. I know that if you were to make socks out of this yarn, you could get stunning identical pairs of socks. What's really interesting is how speckled this yarn turned out because the food coloring from the snow dyeing process did not penetrate the blank all the way. So we have these white speckles in areas that result from color not going all the way through the blank. Some of the white patches come from the white patches on the blank, but I think that this will knit up really cool and give you a fun overall gradient even as the colors mix together. The worsted weight yarn also turned out really cool. The colors are rather bright, but compared to the stroll yarn, they feel like they could be more of a pastel. Overall, we had a lot better coverage of dye with the yarn, and there's very little white left. I will insert a picture of this, but what was really interesting is that when we took this blank and looked on the inside, on some of the sections that were half blue or half red and then the, on the underside ended up being really purple, you didn't see the purple kind of bl like brushing on the underside of the yarn. I don't think I could possibly hand paint a blank in this way so you got one color on one side, one on the other, when the fabric of those two sides was touching. 
So I just think it's really, really interesting how the snow melted to create these colors. The overall colorway for this yarn is somewhat of a rainbow. We start with purple and go through the rainbow down to a red section, go back to purple, and then go back to red. And this comes from the way that we folded the yarn back and forth versus having it in a loop where we would cycle through the colors in the same order. I think that this yarn will give a really, really lovely gradient effect um, with some mixing of colors, but the tones overall will shift from one color to another, and I think that it will look really, really cool. Unlike some of the other asymmetrical yarns I've dyed, I think that even though you would not get two identical mittens, if you were to knit mittens with this yarn, you could get mittens that coordinate well with one another because the same colors and tones are present in multiple places in the yarn. So even if you know you don't, they don't match completely, I think you would get all the reds through purples on each half of the yarn so you could have a coordinating set that's not an identical set. There are some places in this blank where we have small specks of color, either you know, in a white or a little fleck of orange in another spot. But overall, these little tonal variations are much more subtle than they are in the straw blank. Now, when I've dip dyed a blank of this worsted weight yarn before, we saw a lot more modeling and sort of mini breaking. But the difference between dip dyeing the blank and snow dyeing the blank is that when you dip dye with the added heat, the food coloring strikes to the yarn much, much faster than it does in the snow dyeing example. And so that gives us some of these more even tones throughout the yarn. Now that these yarns are wound onto the Nitty Nottys, I'm gonna go wet them so that way I can help relax the crimped feel that they have, so that way when I remove them from the Nitty Nottie, they're not likely to get super tangled. I just took the yarn off of the Nitty Nottie and I just quickly wanted to share this view of the gradient. Um, so you can really see that the red, orange, lack of yellow, green, blue, purple. Here are the finished yarns that we created by snow dyeing both a commercial double-stranded sock blank and a homemade worsted weight blank. We got some really intense colors and observed greatly the difference by which the 100% wool and the Stroll Superwash Nylon Blend absorb color, especially when the color is slowly dripping onto the yarn over the span of multiple hours. The Wool of the Andes yarn is capable of absorbing really intense colors, as intense as what we see on the 250 gram skeins of silk yarn. But in this case, since the dye wasn't striking to the fiber fast and was moving through the fiber to give more coverage to the yarn, we ended up with some less bright colors from what we saw on the commercial blank, where we saw vivid, intense patches of color and then also pure white left over. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I am having so much fun with the Sock Blank Special. I hope that you have subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, so that way you can be notified when another live stream comes up. There is a lot going on this week, and we are going to be looking at multiple different ways to dye Sock Blanks. Thank you so much for watching!